Greetings and welcome to our Meet the Freshman Roundtable, co-hosted by AgriPulse and the Farm Journal Foundation, which is leading an initiative called Farmers Feeding the World. I'm Sarah Wyant, the editor and publisher of the AgriPulse newsletter and website. I am pleased to have three freshman members of the House Agriculture Committee with us here today. Congressman Vicki Hartzler, who represents Missouri's 4th District, Congressman Reed Ribble, who represents the 8th District of Wisconsin, and Congressman Marlon Stutzman from the 3rd District of Indiana. And today we're going to ask them a few brief questions and get their insight on what they have been experiencing as freshman members of Congress. So welcome to each of you. Thank you. First of all, I'd like to look back a little bit. When we first started our Meet the Freshman series and interviewed you last year, you were still getting organized, finding your way around the offices, and learning all your committee assignments. Tell us, Congressman Hartzler, let's start with you. What's been the biggest surprise since you came to Congress? Well, I, I think it's just the total disregard for the Constitution uh, displayed by some of the proceedings here and, and by our president. Uh, I ex fully expected to pass a budget. I believe that's what uh, our Constitution says, that that is our job uh, in Congress. But yet, when I learned last summer that Harry Reid says we're not going to pass a budget, uh, it, it was pretty shocking to me and, and surprising, um, as well as all of the appointments that the executive uh, office is doing with uh, the president's executive orders. It, it has been uh, uh, shocking and uh, disappointing. Mr. Ribble, how about you? Well, you know, for me, I think it is the fact that the Congress of the United States looks exactly to me like the American people look. Yes. We have both men and women. We have uh, conservatives and liberals. Um, we have young and old. Um, it, it's, it's a very diverse group, just like our population. And uh, I think I was expecting uh, maybe a little, little different that this was kind of the cream of the crop. But in reality, uh, we're all Americans, and a Congress looks just like America does. Mm -hmm. Yeah, good for you. Congressman Stutzman? Well, I've really enjoyed my time here uh, as a freshman, especially working alongside my fellow colleagues and the other freshman class. I tell people back home that, you know, people ask me all, all of the time, is there hope? And I tell them that there is hope with this freshman class. Mm -hmm. I'm very proud of the fact that I'm a part of this class and believe that this is, uh, I hope, the start of, uh, of reforming uh, Washington and changing the way that uh, business has uh, gone on for so many years in Washington where we're now $15 trillion in debt. But I think what, what probably surprised me the most is just the size of our federal government. Um, not only just Congress, but the size of each bureaucracy. Um, it's, uh, it's enormous. I come from uh, the state legislature in Indiana, and it's 150 members between the House and the Senate. Well, here you have 535 members. We're spread out. We, uh, we don't often see each other as um, much as we did back in the legislature. And so things move very slowly. And I think that can be a good thing, but also at the same time when things um, that uh, we need to, to really deal with our debt and our deficit problems, the, uh, the urgency doesn't seem to be there like I had hoped it would. So I think what surprised me the most was the lack of urgency. Mm -hmm. Well, talking about urgency, there are a lot of farmers and ranchers around the country who are very interested in seeing you pass a farm bill this year before the current one expires in September. Can you tell us a little bit, and Mr. Rubel, I'd like to start with you, what do you see as a timeline for passage of a farm bill this year, and are we going to get one yet before September? Yeah, well, I'm hopeful that we will. I think from a timeline uh, on our side of it, meaning the House representative side, it has to start first with the budget resolution. So I think um, Chairman Lucas would like to see the budget passed because the budget will first establish the framework mm -hmm. that the, the farm bill will fit in. And so from a timeline standpoint, I think uh, you're going to see the budget passed through the House of Representatives sometime at the end of March. By law, we have to have it done by April 15th. Unfortunately, the Senate just ignores that aspect of it. But we'll pass a budget here on time and within the framework of the law, and then we'll start having our hearings during the summer, and hopefully uh, the Senate's going to be continuing moving their bill. Um, and so we'll take elements of what we learned there, and then sometime early in the fall, hopefully we'll be able to get a farm bill to the floor. 
other perspectives on that? Well, I would sure like to see a farm bill happen this year. I think it's important for certainty, um, certainty and stability in the agricultural economy. But I'm very skeptical. Um, I, I know that we're going to be working forward and trying to, I know we'll be doing hearings in the House and, and um, starting to craft ideas. The Super Committee had actually worked on some aspects of uh, the refresh uh, bill that uh, Senator Luger and I had mm -hmm. proposed, uh, which uh, is, a, is a very comprehensive um, farm bill. And, and hopefully that sets a foundation in place that we can build off of. But, you know, it's a, it's a campaign year, and I know that uh, a lot of uh, political games are played right now, and I'm, I'm fearful that we're not going to get one done this year, probably a one-year extension, possibly. But, um, you know, it's, uh, it's something that we still have to strive for. We need to continue to work towards, and I know that uh, us in the House want to see uh, something done that does give certainty to farmers across our country. Yes, I, I agree. Uh, we need to do everything possible to try to get this farm bill done. Uh, the American farmers and ranchers deserve it. I think we're going to be having some field hearings in March, as uh, my understanding, and we really need to have a framework, I think, by the end of June to be able to have hope to get it through the entire process uh, by the end of September. And whether we can achieve that or not is, uh, is debatable, but I think it's a worthy goal that uh, I think we're all committed to, to doing. And it sounds like the farm bill that was passed for the Select Committee on Deficit Reduction last year that would have cut $23 billion mm -hmm. out of agricultural spending may be the minimum that we can mm -hmm. expect. Would you agree that we might have more than $23 billion in savings over 10 years? Mm -hmm. I agree, and I think that it's possible. Um, the Refresh Act that I mentioned actually saves $40 uh, billion, and there's plenty of, of ways. And I think that farmers across the country are leading uh, they're ready to lead and show the rest of the country that uh, we can do, um, we can save dollars at the federal government level, empower farmers to be more, more productive and to be um, uh, more flexible in the crops that they grow. Okay. I think $23 billion is going to be the floor. Uh, so it could be, it, the, the uh, reduction could be larger. Uh, I can tell you that farmers from my district are uh, asking me on a regular basis to just leave them alone. Mm -hmm. That they mm -hmm. really would like to be uh, more independent from the federal government, from federal government programs, and so there's some room there to move. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Um, last question for all of you. We've we are facing so many tremendous challenges in trying to feed a growing, hungry world. Already a billion insecure individuals that are food insecure around the globe. We're expecting two billion more to be joining us by 2040. What is it that you as legislators can do to craft policy to help farmers and ranchers be more productive and meet that kind of challenge? Well, I know that, um, you know, for years, and, and America is one of the most uh, successful and productive countries in the, in the world, and uh, that's due to the American farmer and the, um, the entrepreneur spirit, the uh, ability to create, um, you know, greater yields and, and uh, the technology that, that is within agriculture. Uh, I'm a fourth generation farmer, and I've seen a lot of changes in agriculture. Uh, over the, my lifetime and, and have enjoyed it because it is actually uh, makes us more productive. And I think that uh, there's several things that we can, we can do and uh, that I talk about at home. It, first of all, I'll touch on the free trade agreements that we just passed with uh, North, uh, I'm sorry, with Korea and uh, with uh, Colombia and Panama. Those are very important because agriculture is our number one export um, uh, here in the United States. And so I think that's something that we can continue to build on is to, uh, to be um, uh, exporting our crops, the food that we grow here in the United States. And also I think what's important is the countries that we um, do export to. What types of governments do they have in place? Because there's a lot of fraud and abuse with the, the food that we do um, give to some countries in food aid where the food doesn't get to the people that really need the help, where dictators are abusing um, what, is, uh, what is given to them through our particular programs. Um, the United Nations is another place where there's a lot of uh, fraud and, and abuse within the food programs of the United Nations. And I think that's where we can make sure we're holding people accountable in those particular areas. Thank you. Other thoughts on that? I think as we look at the Farm Bill, we need to keep uh, a priority for research. 
I think we've, we're able to see the yields that we are seeing today because of the advancements in genetics and the research that we have invested in. And if we're going to feed the world in the future, we're going to have to continue on that same path. Uh, I've been a lifelong farmer. I never would have guessed that we would have gotten the yields that we are getting now with corn and have the resistance to drought and other, other uh, uh, hazards against our crops. So I think we need to still make that a priority, and that's going to be an important part of us feeding the world in the future and keep the technology advancements uh, in our farm equipment and, and the other aspects of our farming operations. I think <coughs> when you look at food insecurity globally, you look at two primary drivers, politics and environment. You have the political world like that uh, Representative Stutzman just talked about, but you, you also have the environmental issues. Uh, there are populations that are in places that cannot provide their own food. Just the, the, the natural environment won't allow for it. And so um, we have to rely on uh, our State Department organizations like USAID to work on the political side of things so that food that is produced here can get there. And then uh, on the environmental side of things, we first have to recognize that those environmental barriers exist. And then uh, trust that the American farmer who has proven over the course of 200 plus years of history to improve its procedures, its production capabilities, and its work ethic. It can, it's a continually improving matrix that we have within America. Uh, we can feed the world. Uh, we just need to remove the barriers from po the political realm and then recognize the environmental realm so that we can get to those places and provide the relief that's needed. Well, it sounds like you all have some excellent vision on where we need to go with American agriculture. And I'd just like to really thank each of you today for joining us. And on behalf of AgriPulse and the Farm Journal Foundation, we look forward to meeting and working with all of you as we try to develop the next farm bill and on other issues in the future. So thank you very much. Sure, thank, thank you. you. Thank you.